Hello. Uh, welcome back to a special uh, Happy Holidays uh, edition of Drink What You Want. I am John DeBerry, your host, and I have a fun uh, person like you to meet today, my husband Michael. And we're going to give you a little tour of our winter wonderland and also going to show you how to make uh, a really awesome drink. So come on in. I inherited a lot of stuff from my parents' house, and so I have a lot of really cool family heirlooms. Also have a lot of uh, nice things that Michael has done. I'm basically like not allowed to decorate. I just, I just, do, the, I just do the lights, um, and then Michael does everything else. This is our Santa collection. This one's a really cool one. He's kind of hot, actually. <laughs> this stocking um, was crocheted or needle pointed. I don't know what the term, yeah, anyway. Sorry, cross stitch by my dad's aunt Jane, I think. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, but anyway, it was very prescient with the rainbow on it. They knew. They knew. Uh, and then when Michael joined the family, we got him one for himself. Our drink for this month, obviously, it has um, a holiday theme. And I'm really excited to share this with you because all the drinks I've done in the past have had alcohol in them, and this one does not. If you're hosting for the holidays, it's always really important to make sure that your drink and food options are as accessible as possible. Uh, so if you're leaving out people who don't drink alcohol, then I think that's a, a hospitality fail. So uh, you always want to have a couple in your, in your back pocket. And here's one. So I'm really excited to share this drink with you for uh, a lot of reasons. I did a riff on a traditional Swedish drink called a glug, which is basically a, like a mulled wine where uh, spices and herbs are infused into like a spirit, like brandy or vodka, uh, and then mixed with a, a warm wine. But I'm doing uh, a very festive, non-alcoholic version of it for everybody. So the base for this cocktail is something called Proto, which is a, a line of non-alcoholic uh, drinks that I created myself, launched last year available on food52.com. Uh, There's two, two bottles in the line. One is uh, the Ludlow Red, which is right here. And it is made with a blend of botanicals like roasted dandelion root, black pepper, licorice, uh, hibiscus, chamomile, and as well as uh, blackberry and fig vinegar. So it has a sum somewhat sort of a similar kind of overall vibe to like a mulled wine. So it works really well in kind of a mulled wine style of cocktail. The challenge when trying to create a drink on top of something that's already been kind of blended as I see to perfection <laughs> uh, is what to add to it to make it even like more interesting and make it more enhanced. And I was really kind of like racking my brain and uh, it turns out that one of my husband's favorite like pre-happy hour Friday afternoon like wind down, wind up cocktails is to blend cold brew coffee uh, and the Ludlow Red, which sounds like really not great on paper. I will admit, <laughs> I will admit that. But actually, if you try it, it's, it's f***ing amazing. So I took the, uh, the inspiration from uh, the coffee and Ludlow Red cocktail that my husband created and uh, grafted on top of that a lot of the glug components that you'll see traditionally in a, in a traditional Swedish glug recipe. So what you'll need, obviously in addition to uh, the Ludlow Red uh, and some cold brew coffee, which I make myself, that's how I drink coffee every morning because I'm too lazy to use um, a coffee machine. Decaf if you want, if you're sensitive to caffeine. Um, and then on top of that, you're going to need a couple oranges, a persimmon, a ground ginger, cinnamon, uh, vanilla extract, you can use alcohol-free or a classic vanilla extract that has alcohol in it, uh, juniper berries, uh, grade B maple syrup, uh, which is now confusingly called like grade A dark amber. Um, and then you'll need some whole almonds and raisins. And that is all you'll need, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention you also uh, need a nutmeg. Actually, whenever you use pretty much anything produce related, I like to wash it um, like literally with soap and water, especially if you're getting, using the rind of, a, of something like an orange. It sounds insane, but it actually, it really, it really helps. A lot of times there's like wax or other like, you know, material on, on, the, on the surface. So you want to make sure you're getting that uh, nice and clean. See how they sparkle. So uh, what you want to do uh, is just basically build everything in like a medium-ish pot and then you bring, bring the heat up. So um, probably the most painstaking step is going to be zesting uh, the oranges. So once you have your uh, two oranges zested, now it's time for the persimmon. Pull the little flower leaves off. And you can give these like a rough chop, like obviously my knife skills aren't amazing, as you can see, um, but it doesn't really matter because you're just gonna be infusing them. All right. And then bring back your zester and you wanna do 
half of a meg of nutmeg. Um, next up, uh, we want to use um, this Ceylon cinnamon stick. It's important to note there's a distinction between uh, the Ceylon cinnamon, which I'm using here, and kind of traditional, kind of harder, barky cinnamon. This stuff is really nice and fragrant and gentle. Um, it's also like super flaky, so it just kind of comes apart like this. It's really easy to work with, especially in drinks. So you can just kind of crumble it in your fingers. So Ceylon cinnamon is my, is my go-to. If you absolutely can't find it, you probably could get by with regular cinnamon. You just won't be able to like actually break it up and it might have a little bit of a different flavor, but it'll still be fine. Um, and then 12 juniper berries. One, two, three, four, six, eight, nine. 11, 12. I use alcohol-free vanilla extract to keep with like the alcohol-free vibe of the cocktail. If you have like regular vanilla extract, which is usually based uh, in alcohol extraction, um, it's fine as well. Half a tablespoon. Next up, we're doing a quarter uh, of a tablespoon of uh, ginger, uh, ground ginger powder. But if you want to just use a little bit of fresh ginger grated, um, it'll give kind of a brighter flavor to it. But this, the ground ginger is really easy because it sits in the pantry and you don't have to worry about it. Quarter cup of the grade B maple syrup. You can see as I'm pouring it, it's like a lot kind of darker than the regular kind of amber, lighter stuff. It has a not much richer, more like maple syrupy flavor. And it also is a little thinner. With a heated cocktail, you don't have to worry about that, but when you're using it in a cold cocktail, the thinner kind of watery or syrup just makes things like a little bit easier to work with. So always recommend grade B. And a cup of cold brew concentrate and a whole bottle of Ludlow Red. And for heat, you want to use the smallest burner you have on the lowest setting because you don't want to um, boil it. So you're just really gonna be super careful with everything uh, and stir stir pretty frequently. Um, depending on your um, setup, it may take you know 10 minutes or 20 minutes to get to like a little bit of a steaming um, action. So if you actually want to like, you know, spike this and make this into like a, a wine based cocktail, you could use a red wine in this. I need to make some, some adjustments, but um, definitely also worth exploring like a, a full body red wine or something like that if you, if you wanted to go that route. Or even a 50-50, like a split. I'm open, I'm open to suggestions, let me know. But once your, uh, your mixture is uh, warming and things are kind of getting mushy, uh, the already uh, ripe persimmon, which should be pretty soft as it is, uh, will get softer and you can just give, give it some, some pushes and just get the, uh, kind of make it into more of a, of a mush to get that extraction and everything mixed up. So. Uh, you don't want it to be to be boiling or bubbling at all. That will kind of cook the ingredients and, and make it taste uh, not the same as, as I want you to. Uh, once you've got that, got that steaming going, you can turn the heat off, uh, let it sit just totally by itself for 60 to 90 minutes. It'll cool down uh, and then all of the flavors will infuse. So now that it's been hour, hour and a half and your mixture has infused and uh, cooled off a bit, uh, grab a large bowl and a strainer. I'm not using a gold strainer today. I need something a little bit bigger. One trick I learned as a bartender when needing to strain things and trying to keep a, a strainer like this like from falling back into the bowl, um, I get a little spoon, and, or a big spoon actually, and this do there, and that way it kind of keeps everything locked in and you don't have to worry about it. All right. Now, give it a strain. Actually, I'm, I lied, I'm gonna be using a gold coffee filter because the one I was using was a little bit not quite fine enough to get all the particulate matter out. So um, you wanna put it back in your pot to get warmed up again. So it's the same basic idea as before. You wanna bring it up to a point where it's um, steaming, uh, but not boiling or bubbling in any way. I uh, just wanna get a nice hot drink temperature. Yeah. Give it some stirs, cover it, yeah. 
So now that it's up to uh, your desired temperature, you're free to ladle and serve it straight from the pot. Or uh, if you're fancy and wanted something cute, you can get a little um, vessel like this. Uh, and there we go. And the last step, uh, once you're getting ready to serve it to um, a person, uh, is you have the mug and drop some almonds and raisins in there. To me, this is kind of like one of the things that makes the glug a glug as opposed to just like a mold wine because they usually have like nuts and stuff floating around in them, uh, which is to me at first glance seemed a little strange to have nuts floating in my drink, but uh, they were fine. They actually ended up being very tasty. So. Cheers. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed our Lower East Side Glug recipe and also want to thank everybody for watching uh, this year. Uh, it's been really fun uh, getting to know everybody and getting to share my, my lipstick and my drink expertise with all of you. And don't forget, if you like this video, like and subscribe. And also comment. You've also been really nice in the comments for the most part, so I love talking to you all. And thank you all for joining me and us and Felix for this first uh, half year of Drink What You Want. I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, lots of fun videos in the new year, including a, a really awesome Dry January cocktail, which will come out to you uh, next month. So stay tuned for that, and uh, happy holidays and happy new year. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs>